Hey kids, it's Miss Sasha. Welcome back to art class. I'm super excited to be here today. Today, we're gonna talk about snowshoe hairs. Hmm, what is a hair? What are snowshoes? Hairs are in the same family as rabbits, but hairs and rabbits are very, very different. Hairs are much larger than rabbits. Hairs have larger hind legs. That means their back legs. Hares have much taller or longer ears. They run faster and their fur changes colors to adapt to their surroundings. That's pretty interesting. Well, what is a snowshoe? A snowshoe is a type of footwear worn by humans like us for walking over snow. This is snowshoes. These are snowshoes on a person's feet. They keep you from sinking into the snow Snowshoes are a form of hiking, so you wouldn't wear hiking shoes to stay above the snow. You would wear snowshoes. They're wide, and so they take up a lot more space and keep you above the snow. Traditional snowshoes have a hardwood frame, kind of like this one, and they're, they have a rawhide lacing, so they're all laced together. So what do snowshoes and snowshoe hairs have to do with each other? Well. A snowshoe hare has particularly large feet that look a lot like snowshoes that humans wear to walk over the snow. Their feet are long and wide and fantastically furry. Their furry feet help to keep their large feet warm in the snow in some of the coldest environments in the world. Look at these snowshoe hare's feet. These are their back feet. This is him running super fast over the snow. Look how large their feet are, much like snowshoes. They're shaped a lot like them. Those feet have a need for speed. They are strong and fast runners, and they can run almost 30 miles an hour. That's really, really fast. They can also jump almost 10 feet high. I'm only five feet, two inches tall, so that's jumping twice the size of myself. That's pretty tall. Those hairs are only about two feet tall, so they're not even large, but they can jump really high, really far, and really fast. That is pretty amazing. Check out these snowshoe hairs. Look at these snowshoes. Two very different things, but much, much alike. Why do snowshoe hairs fur change colors? These are both snowshoe hairs. One is brown and one is white, but they're the same exact animal. Well, a snowshoe hare's fur changes colors when the weather or the seasons are changing. So in the winter months, they turn the color of snow, white, very, very white. This snowshoe hare is in the process of changing colors from either brown to white or white to brown, depending upon which season it's switching from. So. They change so they're camouflaged with the snow. Otherwise, they would risk or they would stick out to the predators or the animals that are on the hunt for them, maybe for, um, for food, right? Their stylish coats also keep them very, very warm. It's made up of three different layers, just like a quilt. A quilt has three different layers. The top layer is silky soft fur for insulation, right? The middle layer or the medium layer has medium thick hair and then the long coarse outer hair. So the hair you see on the outside of the hair is the outer hair, right? It's like a human who puts on a winter coat for extra warmth, right? So now we're going to talk about this one. In the warmer months, the snowshoe hairs have a reddish brown fur, sometimes maybe even gray. This helps them to blend into the forest floor or the bushes. So even though they're all about winter sports, the snowshoe hare can put their big feet to good use when they wanna go swimming in the spring or the summer. Hares are very, very strong swimmers. They jump into ponds and streams to get the food to or to escape a predator. So these big, big feet are like giant paddles. So they can swim really, really fast. That is a fact that I did not know. Hmm. I think it's a pretty cool fact. So their large feet, the ones that look like snowshoes, 
are important for them in the winter to hop quickly through the snow and in the summer or the spring to swim through the water. Pretty cool, right? It takes about 10 weeks for the coat to completely change colors. That's called adapting to your surroundings. So it takes 10 weeks for this snowshoe hare to switch colors. Can you think of another animal or insect that might change colors to adapt to its surroundings or to become more camouflaged? Hmm. Something that comes to my mind quickly would be like a lizard or a chameleon, right? They switch. If there's a lizard on a green leaf, then the lizard turns green. If there's a lizard on a brown, say, fence, it might turn a little bit more brown. That way it blends in like camouflage. Another animal that comes to mind is an octopus. An octopus can change colors, sizes, shapes. It can look like rocks. It can look like grasses. It can look like a little ball. An octopus can change in so many ways. Even a squid can change colors. Pretty cool. Beetles. Some beetles have different symbols or colors that look like where they live. Spiders, even some spiders and Arctic foxes. They change like the rabbit changes for the different seasons. Uh, snowshoe hares are herbivores, right? Which means that they love plants and berries. But in the winter, a hare can't be too picky about what they eat, right? They have to eat twigs or maybe bark off of a tree um, bushes, and they dig through the snow to get like moss or lichens, pine needles. Ugh. Can you imagine eating a pine needle? Yum, maybe not. Um, a snowshoe hare, they belong to the mammal family. So they're warm blooded animals, like a dog, a mouse, maybe a bear, a whale, or even a human being, right? That means that they have a backbone, they feed their young milk, and they have skin that's covered with hair. Even though we don't have hair like a rabbit, we do have hair on our arms, we have eyebrows, we have hair on our head, right? So here we go. We are going to grab our supplies, and the supplies we're going to need today is one piece of white paper, crayons including a black and a brown, and some assorted crayons. So now is a good time to pause your video and gather all of your supplies. Now that you've gathered all your supplies, go ahead and put them in front of you and let's do a quick finger and hand warm up. I like to warm my hands up, maybe by wiggling them to get them ready for drawing. We have a lot of drawing to do with this little hair, right? So wiggle your hands, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Maybe do a fist. A fist, and while you're doing a fist, try to do a wrist twist with a fist. Those all rhyme. Maybe around and around and around. Maybe open, close. Open, close. Maybe wave with one hand. Maybe wave to your neighbor. Wave to your teacher, your friend across the classroom. Maybe both. Like you're really trying to get someone's attention oh, without making any noise, right? Maybe one little finger at a time. Wipers, like a windshield wiper on a very rainy day. Back and forth, back and forth. Perfect. All right, we're gonna get our white piece of paper and I want you to put it in front of you. It's gonna be tall or vertical, okay? Perfect. Now, the part of the paper that's by your tummy, I want you to pick up. We're gonna bend our paper in half. So you're gonna go from bottom to top, make the corners meet, and when you have your corners meet, I want you to press on your paper, making a nice crease, fold or bend in your paper. When you're all done with that, put it straight down in front of you and get your black crayon, okay? We're gonna draw our hair 
one little step at a time. So stay with me, don't go ahead. We have quite a bit of work to do. When we're done, we're gonna get to color in our hair. All right, here's our black crayon. The first shape that we're going to make on our paper is gonna be the circle in the middle of the page. But I want you to find the middle where the crease is and just put a little line, just a little line on the crease, okay? Because our circle is gonna go below the line. Now remember, this is his little nose right here. You see it, okay? If you make it too tiny, you won't have room for the rest of his nose, okay? His little nose and his little mouth, okay? So I want you to make a nice size circle, starting on your little line. Watch, you're gonna go down and around and back up. You got it? It's okay if your circle is not perfectly round. You Maybe your hair is looking a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right, and that's okay. All right, so the next sh line that we're gonna make is, it's almost like it's a circle, but it has to stop right above the little nose. This is for the bottom part of the hair's face, okay? This part down here, all right? So, we're gonna start, see, on this little line, and you're going to curve around below your nose and stop. I didn't complete the circle, okay? Stop on the line, or start on the line, go around and stop on the line. Don't go any higher, all right? You got it? Good. Okay, the next line that we're gonna make is gonna be the top of his head, this right here. We are not making the hair's ears yet. Okay, we're gonna go above. It's gonna be another curved line, watch. I'm gonna start on the end of this line and end over here, watch. I'm gonna go up and back around. Looks kind of silly right now, but we're gonna add in all his pieces and parts in just a minute. Give you a second to do that. Great. All right, his ears, like I said, are much different from a rabbit's ear. The snowshoe hare's ears are taller, right? They go much higher than a regular rabbit. Now there are some rabbits whose ears are even bigger than a snowshoe hare's ears. So we're gonna go all the way to the top of the page. I'm kind of heading a little diagonally on the page for my ears, okay? Watch, this one's gonna be on this side, watch. I'm gonna go towards the corner, and on this side, towards the corner. Looks like we're making a reindeer, but we're not. Okay. So the next line, I want you to start, not right next to it, but a little bit over, watch, and you're gonna curve the opposite way to make one ear. Okay, do we start right here? No, give it some space, move up a little bit and curve towards the other line. Now we have two ears, starting to look like this rabbit. Inside the ear, I want you to put a smaller part, which would be the inside of his ear, almost like an oval. Okay. Everybody got it? Perfect. Okay, so the next part we are going to make is the little nose, this little nose right here. It's gonna be in this circle. It's almost a triangle. If you want it to be a triangle, that's fine. So watch, you go down and up. Don't color it in. We're gonna do that a different color. All right, and his mouth is like two little curved lines. So if you do a little tiny vertical line, like a little tiny, tiny number one, okay? And then you curve this one this way and the other half of his mouth this way. It makes a sweet little mouth. Look, his little tiny mouth, okay? Perfect. On the sides right here, I want you to put a few little dots. That's gonna be where his whiskers come out. 
You can put a few, you can put a lot. Don't put them underneath, that's underneath his mouth. His whiskers come out of the sides of his nose right here. Okay? Perfect. Now we are going to make this part of his nose. It's like the bridge. This is the bridge of my nose. We're gonna make the bridge of the hare's nose, okay? This is this part of the rabbit, the part that goes from his nose between his eyes, okay? So I want you to start right next to your line for your nose, and you're gonna curve up to right onto his ear. Watch, this one goes up and curve on one side, Whatever we do on the left, we have to do on the right because these hairs are symmetrical. They're the same on both sides, okay? We're gonna do the same thing on this side. Start right here by the nose, curve up to his ear. Got it? Whatever's on this side has to be on that side. All right, eyes. His eyes are really dark. This guy has a little bit of brown eyes. These are very dark. Most of them are pretty dark colored eyes. We're just gonna do ours with little black ovals. And it's in this space right here, not on the bridge of his nose, in this space. Not down here, not on the line, above the line, a little oval and a little oval. It's okay if yours is a circle, okay? Got it? Perfect. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, we're not gonna add his little eyelashes. We're not gonna add his whiskers. We're gonna do that in a minute. We're gonna go ahead and add all these tiny little ones all over his body that represent his fur or his hair, right? So we're gonna do this one step at a time. Let's start with his ears. Inside of his ears, I want you to just start, not here, not in the, in the tiny oval. I want you to start putting little number ones all on the inside of his ear. Whatever I do on this side, I have to do on that side, okay? How's that? I'll give you a little minute to do that. While you're doing that, let's see, there's some differences between hares and rabbits. And one of them is that hares are born with their eyes open and they have a furry coat. They're born like that. Rabbits are born with no fur and their eyes are closed. So little rabbits need their mom a little bit longer than a hare does. All right, everybody have their ears all done? Great, let's do the bridge of his nose. Start by his little nose and you can start putting number one, tiny little number one, this is his hair. Right, remember they have three layers of hair. Okay, good. I'll give you a little minute to do that. Let's see, snowshoe hares, they spend all of their time above ground. They sleep under bushes, they sleep uh, under roots of trees, maybe in a little hole, but rabbits, they dig underground dens and that's where they live. Underground, hares live above ground. All right. Let's go ahead and do his face, all of this part. We'll do his body in a minute, okay? So I start by doing, watch me, little lines around his eyes. And then I just keep going around, look. Keep going around until I fill in his whole face with little ones. This takes a little while, so I'll give you a few minutes to do that. The more little number ones you put, the hairier your rabbit will look. All right, go ahead and work on that. I'll give you a few minutes. Let's see, I'll give you hair's fur change colors. We talked about that, right? They adapt to their, um, to their surroundings, right? Their environment. They adapt to uh, the seasons and the change of time, right? Um, so that's, and then a rabbit fur stays the same color year round. So they do not change at all, okay? Let's go ahead and do his body. It's two curved lines that go like this. 
that make his little body. All right, he needs hair in his body, right? He's not a rabbit. He needs a hair. He has fur all over his body. So we're gonna do little lines. Boop, boop, boop. Perfect. Go ahead. We're almost done with adding fur to our hare's body, right? Hares, they eat bark and twigs. We're rabbits. They eat grasses and vegetables. What's the rabbit's favorite vegetable? Does anybody know? It's a carrot. That's right. And they really do love carrots. Whereas hares eat more like um, lichens and moss and bark and twigs, right? Okay, great. Let's add our eyelashes to our hair. They have really long eyelashes. You can't see that on the brown one, but you can see on the white one and on this one, right? So right above his eyes, I just did a few long eyelashes. Boy rabbits or boy hairs and girl hairs have eyelashes, I promise. How's it look? Awesome. It's time to go ahead and add our whiskers. Look how long these whiskers are. We added little dots on his face for whiskers earlier. So watch, let me go first. One side. The other side. I love the whiskers on this little rabbit. When you're all done with your whiskers, I want you to go ahead and get your brown crayon. We're gonna color in a few things brown first because you can see the hairs actually still have a little bit of brown on them. So we're just gonna add a little bit and then I'm gonna let you do something special with your hair in a minute, okay? So the first thing I want you to do is just Maybe go around the edge of your ears. Just the edge, around the little edge. Don't color it in brown. On this side. Perfect, if you wanna do a little bit on here, you can. It's almost like tracing the black. We're not gonna color in his ears all brown. Okay. And let's go around maybe the edge of his bridge of his nose with just a little bit of brown. Okay. And maybe a little bit around his body. I usually go under his neck because it's like a little shadow. And remember how sometimes we can press really, really hard or really, really lightly? Maybe you want to go lightly under his neck. Good. And maybe we want to go around his nose just a little bit. I'll give you a little second to go around that. Let's see, hares are wild animals. They're not made to be domestic or a pet. Rabbits can be, rabbits can become a house pet. Hares cannot become house pets. They are too wild, right? They spend, hares spend most of their time alone. They like their time alone. They're solitary, whereas rabbits are social and they live in large groups. So that's, that's a lot of different, a lot of differences between a hare and a rabbit. Okay, so now that we have our brown around our edges, 
You might want to go a little quickly around his little head if you want. I'm going to show you something that we're going to do with our hair. We're not going to leave it just like a white hair. Or I'm going to let you have some choices in color. Look at this little rabbit. Okay? I want you to think about where your rabbit might be so you can think about what colors you want to use so he can maybe blend in or he can be camouflaged within his surroundings, right? What is the weather outside? Um, how will he blend in, right? You have to tell me, what are his surroundings? Is it in a forest with a lot of green? He might need to be more green. Is he in the snow? He might need to use lighter colors. Do you just wanna be creative and make your rabbit whatever color you want? I'm completely good with that. So I'm gonna start with one color. Cause look, every different section, I colored a different color. So you too can do that, watch. I'm gonna start with yellow. Oh, look, you know what I forgot to add on this little rabbit here? You can add two little teeth if you want, look. See, forgot to do that. I'm gonna start with the inside of his ears being yellow. There, your turn. You decide what color the inside of your rabbit's ears are going to be. We'll do a little bit of this together. Alrighty. That wasn't a lot to color, so you can pick another color. I'm gonna pick green. I'm gonna let my rabbit be all different kinds of colors. Holiday colors, maybe. I'm gonna make his nose, nope, I did this nose green. I'm gonna do the bridge of his nose green. And it will kind of blend in with the black crayons, but that's okay. I planned it that way. Okay, I'll let you color in the bridge of his nose, whatever color you want. How's it looking so far? All right, I'm gonna pick another color. I'm going to pick blue. I'm gonna do his nose blue. Got it. And are some of you doing yours the same color as mine? I bet you are. That's okay. Some people might be changing it up a little bit and that's okay. If you like the colors I choose, that's fine. All right, I have purple next. I'm going to do his ears purple. I didn't use purple at all on this one. Now that you know how to draw this rabbit using different shapes, I think you can probably make another one. And if you want your rabbit to be different colors or if you just want a traditional white rabbit, maybe you put snow in the background. Maybe you color him all brown to be a snowshoe hair in the spring or the summer, right? Maybe you keep your snowshoe hair um, white, like in the snow. Maybe your snowshoe hair is changing fur colors on your picture. Either way is fine with me. All right, I'm going to pick pink for his nose. I'm not gonna color his teeth pink. I'm gonna color around his teeth and do his face pink. Perfect. All right, so I want you to finish up coloring your rabbit however you want, and then I want you to add a fantastic background. Maybe it's for a special holiday, maybe it's for a special season, maybe it's for a special person, it doesn't matter. However you wanna decorate your background is fine with me. So today was really awesome. I had so much fun drawing a snowshoe hair and looking at the, and talking about the differences between a rabbit and a hare, right? And I look forward to seeing you guys next week. I hope you have an awesome day. Thank you so much.